So, good morning students. So, I welcome you all in the distributed time signal processing lecture. So, this is lecture number 6. six one. So, till that what we have seen, we will refine the things and whatever assignment or just we can say that uh, one problem given to you, that solution I will give you in this lecture and we will solve one problem that is 8 point DFT, how to calculate an 8 point DFT. Then we will stop for 8 point DFT. Then we will go for inverse DFT. Okay. And a different problem based on that. Okay. So, so if you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to the channel and mention your attendance in the chat box. I will see, I will watch afterwards your attendance. So, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. If some student is absent, so I will give you, if he has not seen the previous lecture, in the description box, I will give you each and every lectures, uh, lectures link, so you can watch the entire instruction from first slide to last one. Okay, so uh, we'll start over here. So in the discrete time signal processing, this is the subject where we are going to see, we are seeing the DFT. Okay, this DFT that we have discrete Fourier transformer. So why we are calculating the DFT? That is the first question if you are thinking about this. Why we are learning this? Why? Because you know that our normal signal, if I am talking with you, okay, like I was talking with you, what are my speech signal is there? There are the vibrations, you know that, and these are con these are continuously changing my frequency. Whatever the frequency is changing, its amplitude continuously changing. So this is nothing but what my continuous signal. Okay, continuous signal. But but if some processor is there. Some kind of processor, for example, uh, speech processing is okay. Means what? Uh, suppose the door is open with my voice or speech. Okay, that will be nice. Okay, so the processor is there. Suppose this is a mic where I'm talking. This is a mic. It will get the signal. I will draw like this one mic. And some door is there. So this is suppose kind of a door. Here. Automatic door. So in between that something must be there. Something must be there. Okay. So what I will do, I will use some kind of uh, processor. Uh, this is called the DSP processor, digital signal processing system. Okay. So what you will do? You will take in an analog signal, convert that signal into something, something that I will take what is that something, and it will open the door which has not been my my voice. And it will record like my voice and it will open. So the processor, the DSP processor, it is discrete time, I'm sorry, uh, discrete signal processor, processor is there. So what you will do, it will, uh, will recognize my signal. And what you will do, you will, what you will do, you will open the door. Now, here definitely some, to open the door, you must use some kind of hardware that is known as motor. Motor must be connected to the door. Then and then it will open and close and open and close. This DLC. So it will take this signal is obviously my analog signal or we can say that continuous signal. This signal must be continuous signal. Yeah? Okay. Are you getting what I am trying to say? If you if you getting the thing, then give me the thumbs up in the chat box. Okay. I will watch it. So you are you are getting a lot. If someone is absent, please call on your, his personal number on WhatsApp and tell him that session is live. You can come in the live and watch the session. Okay. So, so analog signal and continuous signals are there. But to communicate with this, the signal must be in this script because it's named in this script. This is the digital. This is the digital. So, if we have to convert this to what it is there, that is nothing but analog to digital. Converter ADC that is being more than nothing but what ADC analog to digital converter must be there ADC. Okay, so in between that the DSP processor itself contains a ADC. Okay, itself contains some uh, some if they don't have so externally we have connecting it with that we have to use one unit called as ADC. We have to use what ADC in between this ADC. Okay. So we have connected this one. So now the DSP processor knows what we are talking about. So this conversion of this one, analog to digital conversion. Okay. So so 
analyze the data, you know, time of it, that amplitudes are only increasing amplitude, amplitude are increasing, decreasing, amplitude increasing, decreasing. Suppose my speech is very less. Hello. So what will happen? The amplitude is smaller. I will say hello. The amplitude will be increasing. Okay. So likewise, what will happen? Increasing or decreasing amplitude, but what will happen in the frequency? What will happen in the frequency domain? So if you want to go in that one, so we have to go for discrete Fourier function because it will give you the discrete time signal to frequency. Means my discrete time signal will be converted into what? What we are going to move from this one? What we are getting just the plus four here? Just a minute, huh? just a minute. Okay, here is just this. I will done this portion now. Okay. So the discrete signal will convert it into frequency domain. So what is the use of this frequency? Why we are getting the frequency? Why we are getting the plus one? Why we are getting the plus one? Okay. So what is the thing in that? I will tell you in detail. What is the necessity? Why we are converting into our time domain to frequency domain? Either this may be discrete time or continuous time, frequency, continuous time or discrete time. Frequency also not even more discrete. Okay, keep in mind, frequency is not continuous. Frequency is always all. Frequency might be continuous or discrete. I will tell you what I am talking about. There are two. Okay, I will tell you this. This is the upcoming day. What is it? Finish this of each and every day. So, discrete time signal is converted into what? Frequency domain. Okay. So, why? Above, I am having this is okay. This is some of that called as ECG. It might the signal might not be correct. Uh, similar way you will find the ECG signal. ECG that is that is electro cardiogram. Okay. So, we are having this signal, we are using this signal for monitoring my heart activity. What do you can say? Heart activity. Suppose what will happen is, if I am converting this time domain, okay, this time domain, okay, this time domain. So, if I am converting this in frequency, frequency, okay, converting into frequency, then I will get the graph like this. Suppose this is frequency in which I will get what? This amplitude. Amplitude versus what frequency? Then it's if I am converting into this one, so this is again my amplitude, obviously. And if this is a time domain, a time, the time domain. Okay, so time is what can say? An independent variable and your this one amplitude is what you can say independent one. Here also frequency is independent and this on this frequency this amplitude will be dependent. Okay. So what will happen? So this will be like this. Suppose this 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 30 hertz. Okay. These are some kind of amplitude. What it means? What it means? That is nothing but suppose whatever this frequency is nothing but what? Cycles per second. Okay, that's it. So this signal, how much frequency is happening? 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours, 40 hours. Suppose what will happen? The signal will be compressed. Signal will be compressed. Compress. So I will get a 10 hours frequency, sorry, 5 hours frequency. And the ECG. If you know that ECG, the 5 hertz signal will not occur. 5 signal will not occur. That means this must be an error. This must be an error. But if you are watching this one, if you are watching this one, we are not able to diagnose that it is ECG is faulty or the heart activities are some kind of change. Okay. So to, to find out which kind of frequency are present in this signal, we have to go for what you can say. Frequency domain analysis. Frequency domain analysis must be there. That's why we are going for the different frequency domain. Uh, frequency domain. What can say? Uh, frequency domain analysis tool. 
like Gabon transform, Gale transform, BFT, STFT, short time to Fourier transform, Fourier transform, Wesley transform, likewise. So we are going to go that. Okay, so now we are going to go to our program and say that the signal if we are converting our time domain to frequency domain, so how much frequency are they are using this one? We are getting this one. That's why we are going to for the frequency domain. Okay, that's why we are going to go for the magnitude problem and phase problem. Okay. So so I will discuss last problem answer. Lot of students are there. I think Shubham. I will ask you to play with the names. Shubham. Okay. The first problem in this one, I think Sairi and Vinayani have mailed a WhatsApp to WhatsApp message. She is sharing the answers of correct answers. Okay. Then for second question, I think Rajesh, Tofni, Shubham. Uh, this student, I think. Okay, if someone is named, name is not mentioned, so I will mention in the next. So this student have answered the correct answer. So I will tell you the answer of this one. That is nothing but magnitude plot, magnitude plot, magnitude plot, magnitude x of t, modulator x of t is equal to I think four, four to zero, four to zero. Okay, and if phase Say it is equal to angle of x of a is equal to uh, zero into zero by zero by. So in my now I will tell you. So if you have x of zero, I know that your x of zero is four one. Okay, four of them, and here you are not getting any kind of imaginary part. Imaginary part is not there in this one. So what you can say is magnitude amplitude ratio of phase phase is equal to zero. And if this x of zero is minus four, okay, minus four, then this phase must be how much? Angle of minus infinity how much? Five. Keep in mind. Keep in mind. What I am trying to say here. First case. In the first case. In the first case, only real particles available. Okay. So real there is positive real particles. Positive real particle is there, so its phase phase must be equal to zero. And if negative real particle is there, negative real particle is there, then phase must be phase equal to one eighty degree or uh, pi. Okay. So this is the answer of this question. So we can plot this one with the help of graphical also, or no need to think with graphical. If you are putting like this, okay. Okay. So today we will stop here. We'll see 8.8 in the next lecture. Okay, thank you very much for attending the lecture. Thank you.